Hi everybody, Jacob Reed here from ReviewEcon.com. Today we're going to be talking about the business cycle. If after watching this video you still need a little more help, head over to ReviewEcon.com and pick up the Total Review Booklet. It has everything you need to know to ace your microeconomics or macroeconomics exam. Let's get into the content. When it comes to tracking the overall macroeconomy in the business cycle, we have three macroeconomic goals that we have to keep in mind. The first of those three main goals is economic growth. And when we say economic growth, we mean we would like to have an increase in real GDP or per capita GDP in the long run. In AP Macroeconomics, economic growth is defined as an increase in potential real GDP. Economic growth also means that we have an increase in real income within the nation over time. And that's because, as you know, real GDP is equal to real national income because we can calculate GDP using the income approach or the expenditure approach. And increases in real GDP as well as real income both equate to an increase in the standard of living for the citizens within a country. And all of those things are what we mean by economic growth. The second macroeconomic goal we have is full employment. Now, as you learned in a previous video, full employment doesn't mean we have 0% unemployment. It means we have zero cyclical unemployment, but we are still going to have some frictional and structural unemployment. And as a result, the unemployment rate we have will be equal to the natural rate of unemployment. The third macroeconomic goal we have is stable prices. That means we don't want really high inflation or deflation. The Federal Reserve targets a 2% inflation rate. That means something that costs a dollar at the beginning of the year will cost an average of a dollar and two cents at the end of the year. As of the making of this video, the inflation rate is much higher than that targeted 2%, and the Federal Reserve is using monetary policy to try to decrease that inflation rate. You'll learn more about that in future units. And when we are experiencing high levels of economic growth in the business cycle, we tend to have higher rates of inflation and prices on average increase at greater than 2% average rates. But we also would like to avoid deflation and that's when prices fall over time. And deflation can occur when we have a bad recession. Now we've already looked at how we measure these three macroeconomic goals. We know that GDP is how we measure economic growth. We know that we use the unemployment rate to find full employment and we use the CPI or the GDP deflator when tracking price changes or inflation. And through those measures, we can tell if we are meeting our three macroeconomic goals. Next, we're going to talk about the business cycle. The business cycle is the natural ups and downs that you get within a market-based economy. And we have a graph to illustrate the business cycle. Over here on that y-axis, we have real output, usually measured with GDP. And on that y-axis, we have time. Over time, our actual GDP will increase, decrease, increase, and decrease again. And that's the business cycle. Now, we hope that the potential real GDP output will increase over time as well. But the actual GDP will occasionally be above the potential and sometimes be below the potential. The first phase of the business cycle that you need to know is the upward sloping portions of the actual real output. Those periods of time are called economic expansion. Economic activity is increasing, which means that real GDP is going to increase national income is going to increase, and unemployment is going to fall because there's an inverse relationship between real output and unemployment. Next, we have our downward sloping portions, and those are our economic contractions. If an economic contraction lasts more than two consecutive quarters, the National Bureau of Economic Research usually labels it a recession though not always. And when we have those economic contractions, GDP is going to decrease, which means national income will also decrease. And with that, unemployment will rise. We have two more phases of the business cycle that you need to know. And the first one is the high points of that cycle. Those high points are called the peak. When our economy reaches its peak, we will tend to have high inflation and low unemployment. But the economic peak marks the end of the expansion and we are going to have a contraction next. Now the low part of the business cycle is called the trough. When the business cycle reaches the economic trough, inflation is generally going to be quite low, unless we have stagflation, you'll learn about that in future units, and it also means we're going to have high unemployment because GDP is low and national income is low. And that economic trough marks the end of an economic recession or contraction. So the four phases of the business cycle we have are first an economic expansion, then a peak, Next, we have an economic contraction, and finally, an economic trough. And those four phases repeat themselves over and over again in the business cycle. 
Now on your macroeconomics exam, you could see some questions about leading indicators. Leading indicators tell us where the economy is headed in the future. One leading indicator is building permits. Building permits are issued to contractors so that they could build new buildings. If we see an increase in the number of building permits a particular city is issuing, it's likely to mean that the construction industry is about to speed up. Another leading indicator we have is business inventories. Business inventories are the products that businesses have made and they're in their warehouse, but they have not yet sold them. If we see an unexpected increase in business inventories, it's often a sign that the economy is about to contract because consumers haven't been buying all that's being produced and businesses will reduce hours or lay off workers moving forward as a result. Next, we're going to talk about output gaps within the business cycle. We see we have the potential real GDP line there in red and the actual output of GDP in blue. When the actual output is above our potential output, we call that an inflationary gap. And the problem we often have is inflation when we have an inflationary gap. And it means that our actual GDP is greater than our potential GDP. And when we have an inflationary gap, our unemployment rate will be less than our natural rate of unemployment. If we are given an output gap with numbers, we could do some math to calculate the amount of that output gap. If our actual GDP is 120 billion, but our long run potential GDP is 100 billion, we can plug in the numbers and do the math and find out that we have a positive output gap of $20 billion. But sometimes our real GDP is going to be below that potential output, and then we have what is called a recessionary gap. And when we have a recessionary gap, we are going to have high unemployment. Our country's GDP will be less than our potential GDP, and our unemployment rate is going to be greater than our natural rate of unemployment. We can also do some math with a recessionary gap to calculate the amount of that gap. If our actual real GDP output is $75 billion, when our long run potential output is $100 billion, we can plug in the numbers and do the math and find out that we have a $25 billion negative output gap. But when our actual output is on the trend line of our potential real output, then it is said that the economy is in long run equilibrium. That means our actual GDP is equal to our potential GDP. And when we are in long run equilibrium, our actual unemployment rate will equal the natural rate of unemployment. As you remember from the beginning of this video, one of our economic goals is economic growth. Economic growth means that the long run potential is going to increase over time. And so economic growth means we have more potential output. So increases in actual GDP are not economic growth only increases in potential real GDP. And there you have it. That's what you need to know about the business cycle before your exam. If you're ready to practice labeling the different parts of the business cycle, head over to reviewweekon.com and play the business cycle game. If you still need more help after that, pick up the total review booklet. It has everything you need to know to ace your microeconomics or macroeconomics exam. That's it for now. I'll see you all next time.